Monica is thirsty. Okay. She is real thirsty. She had her eyes, her sight was on Lisa, and she has pulled the trigger, and she is feeling herself. She is... mm, mm -mm. I knew better than to stand right away. I was, like, very trepidatious about what I said about her, you know? I just... When they come in so strong, it's easy to be like, oh my God, I love the new person. Keep them around forever. But let's not forget Diana Jenkins on Beverly Hills. Remember that? Anyway, hi. If you are new here, welcome to She Speaks Bravo. I'm kind of like your crazy friend that watches way too much TV and does nothing but talk about it. So either subscribe, follow rate, review, do all the things. And now let's get into this episode of Salt Lake City. Here at She Speaks Bravo, we believe that Bravo TV is a great form of self-care and therapy. I mean, look at me. I've been using it for over a decade and I'm a complete mess. What is this, honey? I love that. I'm Emily. Every week I recap the latest episodes of your favorite Bravo shows, from Housewives to Vanderpump Rules. We need to get more cosmopolitan. So if you're not already subscribed, get subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. Meredith is eating caviar for breakfast. Her caviar, but of course. She's wearing a hat. Her hoodie is up. She has sunglasses on. No notes. No notes. Heather, they keep showing a picture of a bathroom door and like flushing so i can't tell if she's still puking but she ends up rallying like i would be dead i would be like i'm taking a sick day i physically can't do it angie makes her own shirt her own shirt that says well we find out later what it says but she's she asked the front desk guy who is i believe trixie's husband or partner and he's like, yeah, here's a marker. And then he realizes what she's doing. And he goes, oh, that's so sad. You're making your own shirt. <laughs> it is sad. This is, not a, this is not a flex, honey. Lisa goes into Whitney's room to, like, download from the night before. And Lisa's like, how did you feel about last night? And Whitney just stares at her and says nothing. So then Lisa's like, I was like, wow, last night was, like, crazy. Deep, deep thoughts. Whitney says that Meredith manipulates situation situations because of what she's going through. And that's accurate. M Meredith is always like going through something bigger and none of this matters. That's always her line, you know? They flashed to the van the night before, though. And Monica was like fully standing up for Meredith. Something about a three-year-old. Leave her alone. Let's give her a minute. And I'm just blown away that Monica is so all up Meredith's ass. Like, so much. It's odd, isn't it? Lisa lets Whitney know that Meredith outside went, because Whitney's like, well, you guys seem good. She's like, yeah, I followed her out, but then she brought up that there's all sorts of things about Angie and her family. It's like, so we're doing this again. Right. And then if you guys saw Meredith on Watch What Happens Live, um, I think that the I think it was a viewer question that was like, "Do you feel guilty because of Angie's the stuff about Angie's family getting out or something like that?" And Meredith goes, "I nothing really got out, nothing that I knew." And Angie's like, "What?" Because clearly we're going to see something get out. That's not what that's not what I was referring to. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Meredith goes into Monica's room to thank her for being so kind. And Monica is just fully throwing Mo uh, Angie under the bus. It was uncalled for. It's really tacky. It was embarrassing. Well, you're about to become those things too. So at the end of this episode, I'm going to say the same thing to you, Monica. But Meredith goes, well, it's also slander. Is it? I'm trying to think back on what Angie was saying. It's not like she said anything beyond just like, you're mean, you're a bully. Meredith always got to bust that shit out. It's also slander. No, it's not. Monica lays it on thick 
thank thank you for including me and inviting me and I just feel so special and thank you blah 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 blah, blah. girl whatever but then they start gathering to go out and there's Heather. I'm like blown away Heather did that. And the first thing she does is apologize to Whitney for puking on her leg. Mm. Mm. Oof. Bummer. Angie walks out with the shirt. All tricks, no trust. And it's, it's just, it's not, it's not good. It's not, a, it's not the move. Okay. Mm-mm. What she calls the, in her confessional, she calls it petty. Meredith can be petty. So can I what that's not petty is it petty maybe it is petty is it it just feels kind of desperate and embarrassing petty is when you take something away from someone not like not like present yourself in a shirt and then she says in her confessional also it's either make this t-shirt or put a hit out on her family now if you remember from the trailer lisa is going to tell angie that someone thinks that she's a part of the greek mafia so then she says that line. I'm like, oh, is that like, a, is this real? Meredith has arranged a trust building activity and Mary waits in the car again because, quote, I'm not a soccer mom anymore. I know who to trust and who not to trust. Okay. I, I just, I know we love Mary. I know we do. Um, I got a comment today on a post that was something like, how come Lisa can get away with it or so-and-so can get away with it. But if it was Mary, there'd be all sorts of things. And I'm like, that's actually not accurate. First of all, the audience, even the people that weren't excited about Mary coming back are generally pumped about it. Like they're generally like, sweet, I, I didn't want her to be here, but now she's funny. So I responded and I said, no, like the audience feedback, Mary's getting nothing but love except for a few bad comments here and there. Like I've seen a few like, no, she's mean. She's all those things, but she is. But, and then she's like, no, no, I've seen mainly negative comments, a few positive. I was like, well, I post on multiple platforms and I'm telling you, it's mainly been positive. Even people saying I didn't want Mary back are like, mm, I, I see it. But then I had to respond and I'm going to say it here. Mary gets very special treatment. She never has to participate in activities. She doesn't have to talk about her family, which there's a lot to talk about. And it's all accepted because she's Mary. So I don't like people trying to say that Mary has a hard time. Mary gets picked on. No, she doesn't. She literally gets catered to. Here she is in the, in the van ordering a milk, an oat milk latte with a double shot. She needs the double shot. You know, like her contribution to this scene is noticing that it says humps, not bumps. Like, that's her contribution, and that's fine, but let's admit that Mary gets VIP treatment. She doesn't have to do a damn thing she doesn't want to, and I'm sure people are like, because she's funny enough. Totally, but if it was another housewife, you'd be giving them hell. That's my point, is it's not like, if it was Mary, she'd be in trouble. No, Mary does things that other people would get in trouble for. Sorry, I'm like on a bit of a tirade about it, because it's like, it's an irritating narrative that... Meredith, I mean, Mary gets away with everything that other people couldn't. So I don't want to hear it. They do the trust building exercise. It's like the, like guiding people and whatever. And I don't know, it's kind of lame. It's like, a, it, it was a very corporate trust building exercise. Like it wasn't for people like that have been through what this, as, as Heather says, like we've done some shit in this group. Okay. This isn't like your average, you know, you use the copy machine too much. This is a little different, but they get back on the van and Meredith tells Mary that she, and I was scared when Meredith leans over and says, I just wish she would have participated. Mary starts to say, well, did she's very defensive. Didn't I not talk to you as you were getting off the bus? And didn't I explain? And then Lisa cuts her off to try to join in. And Mary goes, oh, it's between Meredith. Don't do that. And then Lisa looks away. Then Lisa looks back and Mary goes, did I hurt you at all? And Lisa goes, no. And Mary goes, I'm not talking to you. I like legit thought she was talking to Lisa too. I thought she was like, she knew she was harsh, but of course she wasn't. She was talking to Meredith. And then Mary says, do you have a mute button? And I, Lisa, thank you. She goes, no, I don't. I'm on play all the time. Not, you don't have to take it from Mary. She's a bitch. <laughs> like, she's just mean to people. 
Mary's explanation is that she likes to do activities, you know, like that with a with a group of people that she actually wants to grow with. It's like, okay, so you just said you don't want to like Lisa tried. She's like, you so you're saying you don't want to do those activities with this group. And Mary, Mary's like, I'm not taking this bait. But then Whitney, of all people, joins in and she says, Mary, you were missed though. Whitney, back up. Don't. Mary says to just drop it, but Whitney starts to continue saying that Mary told someone it was her hip and now you're saying it's something different. And Mary is like, is that, and then, but Mary does an impression. Everyone has a Whitney voice and she's like, like, oh, shut up. It was spot on. They sit for lunch and someone asks Meredith, what's on the agenda? And by the way, it's a it's a weird setup at the Trixie Motel for where they eat. Like, there's not like a table that they can all eat at. They have to sit in on these little couches and things. And so someone asks what's on the agenda. And Meredith goes, well, I mean, not really. And Whitney goes, I'm taking over. And then she presents them with this opportunity to do your own drag makeup, cancel your glam, and it seemed like maybe Lisa was the only one who had glam. So I think that was like directed at Lisa. Uh, Mary's excited. Mary is all about, she wants to do this drag competition. And Whitney in her confessional describes this as a once in a lifetime opportunity to get in drag with Trixie. And no, it's not. Trixie, if you pay Trixie her rate, she'll show up and do a, all she had to do was look at the makeup they did. You know, I thought it was Trixie was going to do their makeup. And I was like, you better let Trixie do your makeup because that's great. But no, you're just going to do your own makeup and then have Trixie judge it. Like that is a weird half-assed last minute plan because Whitney is so desperate to prove I'm actually Trixie's friend. Like if you're going to come to the Trixie Motel, this is how you do it because I'm really her friend. And Whitney will say later in the episode to Mary or Meredith, I would lean into the drag stuff. It's like, okay, I get it. You're, I am Trixie's friend. We got it. Okay. But Lisa's traumatized. She talks to production and she's like, I just, it's my face. Okay. It's my face. And Monica can hear it. And Monica, when she's in her confessional, it's like her seething hatred of Lisa is so obvious. And when someone has that level of hatred for a person they barely know, they are projecting and they've obviously heard a lot of shit from Jen. Because she calls her like Veruca from the Chocolate Factory. Like, I want this daddy and I want this. I'm like, Mary (laughs) is more like that than anybody. She just won't, she isn't cute about it. She's just like, no, I'm done. And that's it. So shut the fuck up. Okay? Privileged AF. Literally everyone on that cast is, okay? They're all privileged. So be quiet. She was in a bathing suit at dinner. So it's so obvious what you're doing here. I didn't like that Whitney went in to tell... I mean, Whitney thought that everyone was going to be gaga over this whole thing, but it's not a great plan. So she goes and she tells Trixie that Lisa's throwing a conniption fit and it's, it's really condescending. It's like, sorry, Whitney, you came up with a plan that no one really goes into, Okay. One of Lisa's lines, though, I have glam in Monaco, I have glam in Saint-Tropez. Great line. Lori, the poor producer, is like, put it in perspective, but that's not where we're going with this. There is no perspective right now for Lisa, okay? She is most likely, I mean, I now that I know that they were going to do their own makeup, it is a little silly, like Lisa throw on some mascara. Um, if it, if it was like Whitney doing her makeup or something like that, I'm thinking, oh, okay, I would be worried too. She was put in a bathing suit the night before, but it's over dramatic, absolutely. And Monica's right later when she says that it's showing how insecure Lisa is. Yeah, it is. But why is that mean? Like, why what, are bad or fucked up or privileged? It's like she's clearly insecure and doesn't want to present any different than she's very comfortable. So like, just because she's insecure, why would you throw that in her face? Like, take that bitch, you're fucking insecure. It's not, it's not like an insult. If you think she's insecure about it, then maybe be understanding. Because yeah, it probably, it, to me, it did show she was insecure. Yeah. But like, I'm insecure. 
We all have insecurities, and that's hers. So once again, shut up. Okay. All of them do their makeup, and Heather is so hungover, and I really just don't know how the hell she's doing it. I also don't know why Trixie isn't, like, leading them in a tutorial. None of them know how to do... The makeup that Whitney and Monica do is... I don't know why it's problematic, okay? It's like cultural approach pro- appropriation. Drag queens do not ever look like that. Drag queens do amazing makeup. So... What they did was just bad, bad makeup. And so I was like, is that what you think drag queens look like? Because that's insulting to drag queens everywhere. The judging, uh, I think even Trixie, I think Trixie thought this was supposed to be a Trixie lookalike contest because he was confused, or she, sorry, well, she was confused by Monica's like Jersey vibe because I think he... I think they, that Whitney just made this shit up last minute and was like, can you show up and let us see the crown that you got on Drag Race? And But Whitney's name is Little Girl, which is a horrible drag name. Monica's is Jersey Mariah, which is another horrible drag name. Angie's is the only good one. Anita Invite. Thank you. That's how you do a drag name. It's a play on words. Little Girl is not a drag name. Okay. Heather's is also bad. Dolly's pride. What? Meredith comes out and she just, she's got some pink eyeshadow. And Whitney is so offended and her, what the fuck, Meredith? As the host of the trip, I would expect her to participate in your activity. As the host of the trip and you blindsided her with an activity, I I would boycott in and, and just show how pissed I was like that. Okay, Whitney, be quiet. Lisa comes out in Morgan glam, like, She's like, this is dressed up for me. And Mary has some glam, but she's also not in a wig. She's not in drag. And so Monica wins, and it means a lot to her. They're about to go eat, and Mary's already sitting on her own by herself, sitting off to the side, and it's really awkward while they eat. And Lisa says, everyone's so quiet all of a sudden. To which Mary says, everybody's been quiet to me, so... And I was like, oh, wait, so you want them to talk to you? I was under the impression that you hope they never talk to you, like, ever in your life. And if that's incorrect, I apologize. But that's what I thought. And so Lisa's like, come hang out. And Mary, no, no, don't change it and make it fake. Okay, well, I don't know what to do with that then. I got What do you want us to do, Mary? Like, nothing will make Mary happy. Nothing. I, I need to know how much they paid her to do this because she is so miserable Like, how much did they have to throw at her for her to even do this? Okay. Some ladies get a little freshened up before they're going to go out. And Whitney, Angie, and Monica stay in that little room. And and they're the only ones in full. Well, no, Heather, too. They're in drag. And they talk about how some women didn't want to participate. And Monica, of course, fixates on Lisa. But Whitney points out that Meredith also didn't. So, but no, for Lisa, I think it makes her very insecure. Sure. But then Lisa walks in on the conversation as they were saying wet noodle. And she's like, who's the wet noodle? And then realizes they're talking about her. And in her confessional, she says, if a wet noodle looks like a pretty girl in head to toe Isabel Morant with good makeup, then yeah, I'm a wet noodle. Because then she gives you that sound bite and it's like really funny. And so it's like, all right, well, that's funny. Sorry, my hair is an absolute disaster. I, like, I'm getting a headache, so I got the glasses on. It's probably really annoying. I apologize, everybody. But, like, I just caught a look at myself in the monitor, and I was like, oh, wow. Mm, okay, you're on camera, Emily. But I did a live for my Patreon people uh, early this – not early, but earlier, and the lights are starting to give me a headache. And I know that the sunglasses make people very upset. So this is my best attempt is the blue light blocking glasses. But anywho. Not well, bitch. I have decided I want to be in my travel era now. I spent way too much of my life not traveling and not seeing this world. But I need to have that type of luggage that is smart, that is fashionable, and that is why I'm going to Bays. I already own their work tote. I've used it when I was a signing agent and I loaded that thing up with like 40 pounds worth of content. And these sexy little straps, they never have broken. They don't even, they don't even have a 
prey on them. So the quality is incredible. It was created by the actress Shea Michelle. She wanted to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories that's designed to make you look like that effortless travel diva while still looking fashionable. Base has literally thought of everything you could ever want in a piece of luggage. 360 degree gliding wheels, a cushioned handle, that's clutch, built in weight indicator. It's built in, okay? They have washable bags for your dirty clothes because you know when you're on vacation, you got the dirty clothes, where do you put them? You put them in the bag. And all the interior pockets you could ever need to stay organized, and that's my key. That's vital. Their luggage comes in multiple sizes and colors, and for shorter trips, the weekender bag is it. It's super functional and it has this awesome separate storage where you can store your shoes. I also put like my blow dryer in there. Every piece is made to look better with miles so you don't have to worry about it in cargo or overhead. And by the way, Bayes has over 30,000 five-star reviews. Whether you're packing for a quick trip or looking to breeze through the security line, Bayes has your personal items covered. Right now, Bayes is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting baystravel.com slash she speaks. Go to baystravel.com slash she speaks for 15% off your first purchase. That's B E I S travel.com slash she speaks. Shut up! That is so stupid! When I wanted to start a merch store for She Speaks Bravo, we used a company that built everything for us and put all the products in. And the look of the store just was not what I had envisioned. Now, I had used Shopify a couple years ago when I thought I wanted to be a drop shipper. And I was familiar enough with the product that I suggested we just use Shopify. And honey, if you haven't seen my merch store, go check it out. It's really cool. Shopify is your no excuse business partner. You can sell without needing to code or design. Just bring your best ideas and Shopify will help you open up shop. Shopify makes it really easy for you to show up exactly the way you want to. Customize your online store to your style when they have all these gorgeous, really flexible templates and very powerful tools. And this new feature, which I wish had been around when I was selling, if you don't have a way with the words, but you have a way with products, use Shopify's new AI-enabled tools powered by Shopify Magic to instantly write compelling product descriptions and email subject lines that will help you save so much time and you'll sell more. Once you start selling too, Shopify makes getting paid super simple by instantly accepting every type of payment. And Shopify grows with your business. So no matter how far or big you grow, thanks to an endless list of integrations and third-party apps, anything you can think of from on-demand printing to accounting to chatbots, everything you need to revolutionize your business. Do you want more marketing made simple, Shopify removes the guesswork with built-in tools that help you create, execute, and analyze your online marketing campaigns. Like, hello, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is a global force, powering Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 170 countries. I've also had the best support on Shopify. They don't make you feel stupid. They walk you through everything. They're really patient. Their support really helps you succeed every step of the way. Sign up for a $1 a month trial period at shopify.com slash she speaks, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash she speaks, all lowercase, to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash she speaks. I love that. On the van, Lisa continu- Lisa confronts. She's like, wait, now who was the wet noodle? You know, Lisa probably shouldn't have even brought this up if she wasn't ready for a fight. But hey, she asked for it. And what Monica's like, because you didn't dress up. And she's like, I am dressed up. This is drag for me. <laughs> but Meredith knows she's also not dressed up. So she steps in. And as everyone is entitled to their interpretation. And Lisa's like, bitch, I wore a fucking bathing suit to a five-star restaurant. And then Monica, like, gears up. She's like, okay, Lisa. And then she starts crying. So I'm like, this is not about Lisa. This is not about Lisa. You barely know Lisa. 
the ring thing is hard for me because I'm going through my own shit. I'm trying to tell you that my boy, I'm trying to tell you that your boys are healthy. Your husband is there. There's so much you have to be thankful for, but you were like, oh my God, my 60K ring. Oh my God, my $60,000 ring. It's just so tone deaf maybe, to hear you talk about money and your successes and the things you have and the G-Wagon and the Porsche. And maybe because you've lived this lifestyle for so long, you're outside or removed from most of America. Like the 1% of the of, of the world lives like you. Okay. I want to break that down a little bit. Maybe we are missing something, but it's not like, wouldn't they have put together a compilation of Lisa being like, I have a G-Wagon, I have a Porsche. But it's also not that far out of my purview of reality because when they did like a go-karty thing one time, I can't remember what it was, uh, but she was on a go-kart with Heather. Oh, it was, yes, it was right after they had, right after the black eye and none of them knew what was happening. And Heather was like, I don't want to ride with anyone because I know they're just going to ask me about it. But Lisa's perfect because they kept cutting over to what Lisa was talking about. And it was like talking about her closet, her clothes. So maybe this is a thing. Maybe this is a thing that she does. But for the record, they all have a lot of money. Heather has a lot of money. Whitney has a lot of money. Maybe Whitney doesn't have as much money, but like Meredith. Meredith's always showing off, going on trips and stuff. Mary. Mary talks about her things all the time. She loves things. So, you know, I don't, I don't like it. I'm like, why are you only taking this out on Lisa? Lisa's like, I work my ass off and I am not going to apologize for one bit of me. I'm a good person. I think about others all the time. You don't know me, so don't fucking judge me. Yes, you tell her. I'm not going to listen anymore. And then she starts, and I, this didn't work. She's like, I'm sorry for what you're going through. And Monica goes, you don't give a fuck. <sighs> Jesus. Look at how you're acting right now. Look at your insensitive self. Your attitude is so rude. You're really shallow. God, girl, you also went and bought a Louis Vuitton bag so that you could fit in with these girls. So there's an element of you that also, it's like just you're jealous. I hate saying that, but you're just jealous. Lisa's like, okay, take off the wig. You're acting right now. Be Monica. And that sets her off. And she calls her a piece of shit in Portuguese. This episode was weird. Like really, really weird. Last week was good, but this one was just like, what is happening? And Angie tries to step in and be like, Monica, like you told me I couldn't talk to Meredith like that. And look how you're talking to her. And then Monica goes, Angie, you live up her ass. So stay there. What the fuck? Lisa tries to say something and Monica goes, no one can hear you because your dog is barking for you. So Monica called Angie a dog. And then later Meredith will call her a pit bull. But but Whitney won't get mad at Monica for that. Whitney is all over the place. Whitney is a mess. Monica says to Lisa, you're so defensive. Duh, you're coming after her pretty hard. So yeah, she's going to feel defensive. She's also probably panicking because she's like, wait, is this going to alienate my audience? No, Lisa, it's not because we already know that you're like glam. They get to street bar and Mary, once again, she doesn't go in and she asks to be taken to McDonald's. So yes, would that be what I prefer to do? 100%. But it's like, well, you're getting paid. To do this show, I need to know what she's getting paid. Lisa walks up to Monica and immediately is like, okay, you don't know me, please. Like, I want to talk about it. But Monica is just only interested in hating Lisa. Lisa's like, you, but this part was bad. (laughs) Lisa goes, you think I can't relate to middle America? I do 100%. And Monica goes, middle America people don't have $60,000 rings. And Lisa goes, yes, they do. No, they don't. Hard no. Hard no. You are definitely out of touch. I don't think you understand what middle America is. I don't think you really know what middle, but also middle class. Maybe that's what they're trying to say, middle class. Monica is like, you can call me materialistic and I'm not going to get defensive. You get so defensive. And that is true. Lisa could always stand to have a little bit more of a sense of humor about herself. That's definitely like a thing for sure. Whitney goes up to then Meredith. To be like, um, I know that they were fighting on the bus, but you also didn't dress up. And Meredith goes, for me, I did the best I could on my makeup. (laughs) Honestly, I don't, I feel like if I was wearing 
like pink eyeshadow and eyeliner and stuff, I'd be like, this is makeup, okay? Because I don't like to wear a lot of makeup. Whitney goes, the truth is we were all excited to be in drag. We all came out in a persona and Meredith goes, we're two different people, Whitney. I don't have to mimic you. And Whitney says, if I planned the trip, we would really lean into the drag and all of that. I'm like, aha, aha. You're pissed that she planned this trip with Trixie, your friend. And now you're like, I would have done this trip like this because you're so pissed that Meredith, Meredith triggered the hell out of Whitney with this with this plan, right? Meredith goes, well, you didn't plan the trip. And the reality is I did the best I can with the makeup. I have a shooting headache where I thought I had a nerve thing going on. I would, I wouldn't would have put on a 30 pound wig on my head. And then Whitney goes, I would do it for the group. And it's like, it's for Trixie. Meredith's like, we were given makeup and I did the best I could, bitch, shut up. And then Mer Whitney goes, so it's a three-year-old and it's a headache and it's this and it's that. Like, when is it really about? But as soon as she said it's a three-year-old, Meredith's eyes got nuts and she went, don't you go there. You are a monster. You are disgusting. You are disgusting. Disgusting. Disg you oops, I <laughs> dropped my phone. Whitney goes, you can't hold me emotionally hostage. And America says, you take a sick child who will suffer for the rest of her life to weaponize against me? Don't you dare! Sorry if I blew out your eardrums with that. Uh, yeah, meanwhile, Mary's getting McDonald's. Which, unfortunately, her fucking getting McDonald's made me have a craving for McDonald's. And I haven't eaten McDonald's in a long time. And I ate McDonald's. And now I'm addicted to McDonald's again. Because, you know, it's got shit in it that makes you addicted. It's real. Okay? God, look at me. I look like absolute garbage right now. I hate it. I hate it. Okay, I turned off my monitor so I can't see myself anymore. Goodbye. Heather goes over to the Lisa and Monica conversation and Lisa's like, I'm hurt because like I've worked hard for what I have. Heather does say she works hard, but then Monica interrupts. It says, you have started from the ground up too, without, without a hand. So you know where I'm at right now. Did Lisa get a hand? Did I miss that? Did I, th did I miss, is her family wealthy? I might've missed that, but did that happen? Whitney then walks back over. Meredith has walked away, but she just walks back over and she goes, it's me again. <laughs> and Meredith goes, not really interested. And Whitney, every time someone tries to work through something with you, you say, I can't deal with this right now because of something I'm going through. And Meredith tries to deny it, but Whitney reminds her that you did it last night. And Meredith, that's because I had an animal like a pit bull going after me after a long day and I got upset but <laughs> lady lady admit you were drunk and she tries now to get in there like she literally tries to get in between Meredith and Whitney did you just call me a pit bull Meredith then Monica calls I believe Whitney and her a chihuahua and a pit bull so girl you have made an alliance here all right Meredith, but now it's literally like the Ron Swanson um, scene in Parks and Rec where they have that swivel chair in the middle that Chris Traeger tries to use. And the lady comes, I just posted it on my Instagram, but it's literally like this. I'm going to, if you're not watching and you're listening, sorry, but for the viewers, it's like this. It's like. <laughs> And Angie just keeps, Angie just keeps trying, I guess is the right word. She's sort of trying. She's doing, she's doing her best to get through. Uh, but Meredith is just not budging. So then Monica gets, I mean, Angie gets frustrated. Was I saying Angie? I was hoping I was saying Angie. Angie gets frustrated and says uh, things like, you're rude, you're classless, and Meredith is just turning the other way. And she's like, she's disgusting. Of course, Monica tries to get Angie to stop, and Angie says, um, hello, you called Lisa a piece of shit. And Monica goes, in Portuguese. It's prettier in Portuguese. Bitch, I'm a fucking, oh, gross. After trying to get Meredith to listen, Meredith is just continually turning away. Angie finally goes, you're a trampoline with eyes. The hard part with that is that her look is so wacky right now that I'm like, I don't know if I would be talking about that right now, <laughs> Angie. Like, mm, just, uh, nope, uh, don't go there. 
Whitney then like reappears out of nowhere. Whitney's like, uh, Monica, Monica, can you move? And Monica doesn't move. And so Whitney goes, Whitney's like, I'm not giving up. I don't think you want to call a woman that. And I'm like, what happened? I forgot. And then Meredith, when she says, I did not call her a pit bull. I said, she attacked me like an animal. I'm like, oh. So Whitney heard that, went away, did a shot, and then thought she could just come back in as if the conversation hadn't stopped and be like, I don't think you want to call a woman that. I'm like, Whitney, you are so bad at this. Your message is never delivered right. Ever. It's never delivered right. Monica asks Meredith and Heather, because then the nice girls go over here and whatever. She's like, was I right about Angie being up Lisa's ass, be, being Lisa's little bitch? And then Angie comes up and just like, who do you think you are? Now Lisa is there too. And Lisa is doing something I don't like. Like she's physically trying to like touch Monica to get her attention and get in her face. Like, don't, I don't like that. Like, I will talk to you, but like, you don't physically force me to, because now you're going to make her more mad. But Angie's like, you say you're my friend, but you call me a lap dog. And then, but she's doing a little bit of the finger in her face. And Monica opens this wide up. She goes, get your fingers out of my face. Don't put your fingers in my face like Jen Shaw. And Angie goes, stop bringing her up. And then, but I think Lisa, I couldn't tell because the caption, I was unclear of who was speaking. I think Lisa says to Monica, but you don't know Jen, remember? And I don't, I feel like we missed a scene where that was something she was trying to say. Uh, but Angie goes, you worked for her. You were her assistant. This clearly busts Monica because Monica told us she worked for Jen. Didn't she? She told us that herself. She goes, honey, you can't be someone's assistant when you're not getting money. Let's talk about getting paid. No, you, you can. You called yourself her assistant and now you regret being that aligned with her and you're trying to rewrite history. Okay? And then Monica's confessional is, all these bitches were Jen's assistant. All of them did favors for Jen. No, no, you can't try and pull everybody into this, girl. You really can't try and do that. So I get it. You're thirsty, but you're also a liar. And you were having an affair with your brother-in-law for 18 months. And that's why your marriage is falling apart, right? I'm thinking... It's just like she's not a she's not a poor victim here. You chose to work for Jen Shaw, and you did up until she claims that she said you want to make six hundred thousand, and then you were like, "Wait, this is weird." Asked your friend in the Secret Service, and then he told you, "Oh, don't just get away from Jen." Like you said those words to us in a confessional. We can pull the soundbite, lady. So Monica's now my nemesis. I wish I could say I enjoyed the mess, but it was just so obvious. And I talked about this on my live. It was just such obvious mess and obvious, like, projection. And she's just, I don't know. I don't like her. I don't, there's something about her now that now I'm like, oof, now I don't like the way she fights. She's all over the place. And she kind of is acting very entitled in this group. Like, she isn't humble at all. She's like, now I'm a part of the cool girls with Heather and Meredith. I'm like, what? Did you not watch the show last season? They were, like, the least popular. So I don't get, maybe she's purposely feuding with, like, because I think Lisa became a bit of a fan favorite, I think. Not for everyone, but she kind of did. And so I think maybe Monica thinks by fighting with her, she'll get more camera time. But she's also deeply triggered by Lisa and projecting all of the things on Lisa. So I kind of want to actively, openly hate Monica. Let me do that. I always try and see, like, everyone's side, but, like, I just want to be happy not liking her because she's giving me Jen Shaw energy, and I don't like that. I guess it gave us content, but I'll tell you who was trying to – they were trying to make Meredith work. Whitney and Angie were trying to get Meredith to work. Meredith doesn't like to work. The only time she's really funny is when she just has these explosions like she did at the dinner, but then she doesn't have a sense of humor about it later, you know? Then later – it's like, I was upset. Mm-hmm, I'm not going to laugh at it. It's like, God, if we could laugh at this with you, you would be a fan favorite. They all could afford it. I mean, Heather's the only one that really, Heather and Whitney are the only ones that are good at like self-deprecation. Lisa isn't at all. So I'm, I'm always going to be correct about that. Like Lisa could use some too. But Meredith especially. Hmm. Oh, wow, I jammed through that one. 
I didn't like this episode that much. I thought it was a little wacky. But um, I have no doubt that it'll stay. The episodes will keep being good. We, I, a bunch of shit happens from what everyone has said about this season. So, And I believe it, too, because it's, it's Salt Lake City. I just hope it doesn't fall apart, because that does happen on Salt Lake City, where it starts to just fall apart and be impossible to put back together. You're like, what is actually happening? You're all on such a different... What is... No one... It's like they're very... They're all kind of overly produced because they're not really friends and would never be friends. And Meredith doesn't even live in Salt Lake City, really, except for, like when she's visiting so there's a disconnect but anyway all right guys love you mean it and i'll see you next time bye thank you so much for watching and for listening to she speaks bravo with emily hanks if you haven't already would you mind leaving a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you listen that would be amazing and if you're watching on youtube make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell so you don't miss an episode and if you're looking for more content more exclusive bonus content check out the patreon I post two exclusive episodes a month and I'm covering just the Bravo jams like classic Roni, Atlanta, and of course Vanderpump Rules. If you just want to support the show, head to buymeacoffee.com slash shespeaksbravo and buy me a coffee or two or five. We also have merch available at shespeaksbravo.com. And if you're interested in hearing my takes on non-Bravo shows, check out my new podcast, She Speaks It All. I cover the challenge, drag race, and any other show I'm obsessed with that's not Bravo. She Speaks It All is available everywhere you get your podcasts, just like this show. Make sure you're following me on the social medias. I am She Speaks Bravo across all platforms. Thank you so much for any support you give the show, even if it's just listening. Appreciate you. Love you. Mean it. I'll see you soon.